everyone and welcome back. If you watched last week's video, you know we are going big and bold in 2024. And that is going to start with shifting slightly how we do the book recommendation videos on this channel. And I need your help to do it. I have always loved putting together the list of books coming out, getting to show you all the new and exciting things publishing this month, and we're going to continue to do that. But I've also wanted to be able to take the time to review books with you as well. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while now, but I know it's going to be a time commitment that is going to be tricky to keep up with in some months while balancing everything else I'm editing at the time. But like we talked about, we're going strong in 2024, pushing our reach. We're doing it. So here's where your help comes in. In addition to talking about all the awesome books coming out each month, you are going to help me choose what I should be reading and reviewing next. I'm going to pull some options from NetGalley and then you can comment down below or message me on what you'd like to see reviewed. I'm so excited. So let's dive into what books you should be on the lookout for this month and at the end I'll put up the options for next month's book. I'm committing to one book review but if I have time I'll do more so feel free to let me know if several interest you. I certainly had a hard time narrowing down the list as you'll see. So first up in your January book recommendations is Midnight by Amy McCullough. This book basically sounds like if you mixed the Titanic with a one room, or more accurately, one boat, murder mystery thriller, and it sounds amazing. Midnight tells the story of actuary Olivia Campbell, who has been given the opportunity of a lifetime by her boyfriend, a trip on a luxury liner to Antarctica, a dream come true for her worth every risk. That is until things start to go horribly awry. When the first bodies are discovered, it's easy enough for Olivia to write it off as a terrible accident. But as the situation heats up and the temperatures continue to plummet, she begins to wonder whether she has booked a one-way ticket to her own demise. Since this book came out on January 2nd, you can already grab it now, just like I did. Next is Sanctuary of Shadow by Aurora Asher. This book is another of Red Tower's romantic sci-fi slash fantasy lineup, which also has included massive hits like Fourth Wing and Starbringer. So it's definitely on my TBR, but I'll say I'm... 50-50 on this one. It's not a norm for me when it comes to fantasy romance, so I'm still going to give it a go, but I think it's because it might just be a victim of lackluster back cover copy, which happens to the best of us. The copy feels very vague and general, even for all the details it gives. I won't read the whole thing to you because it is a bit lengthy, but pause if you wish to read. You see what I mean? It has all the drama and all your typical romantic fantasy top hits, but it just feels super general and I don't really know what's happening even with all the details in there. Just very odd. But with that said, like I mentioned, it still hits all my fantasy romance buttons, enemies to lovers, hidden identities, forbidden magic. So I'm excited to see how the book actually plays out. If you end up reading this one, you'll have to let me know what you think of it as well. We can compare notes. This published on January 9th, so you can check it out now. Next is So Let Them Burn by Camilla Cole. This Jamaican-inspired fantasy follows a God's-blessed heroine who is forced to choose between saving her sister or protecting her homeland. So this book caught my eye for two reasons. First, while I adore fantasy that has romance, I'm also a massive sucker for well-done family relationships. The dynamics can be so powerful and relatable. This book especially sounds like it's going to be awesomely gut-wrenching. And second, this book actually takes place after the main character has already saved the day. The story shows what happens after you've won the war and everyone has gone home, and how that isn't just the peaceful happily ever after you'd hope for, and I love the idea of that. So this story is about Farron Vincent. Farron Vincent can channel the power of the gods. Five years ago, she used her divine magic to liberate her island from its enemies, the dragon-riding Langley Empire. But now, at 17, Farron is all powered up with no wars to fight. She's a legend to her people and a nuisance to her neighbors. When she's forced to attend an international peace summit, Farron expects that she'll perform tricks like a trained pet and then go home. She doesn't expect her older sister, Alara, to form an unprecedented bond with an enemy dragon, or for the gods to claim that the only way to break that bond is to kill her sister. As Farron's desperation to find another solution takes her down a dark path and Alara discovers shocking secrets at the heart of the Langley Empire, both must make difficult choices that will shape each other's lives as well as the fate of the world. How good does that sound? This wild ride comes out on the 16th 
immediate buy. I'm so excited. And finally, A Fragile Enchantment by Alison Saft. This is pitched as romantic fantasy of manners, and it feels like if you took Bridgerton and gave the characters magic, and I can only imagine that chaos, and I'm here for it. Neve has never let herself long for more. The magic in her blood that lets her stitch emotions and memories into fabric is the same magic that will eventually kill her. Determined to spend the little time she has left guaranteeing a better life for herself and her family, Neve jumps at the chance to design a wardrobe for the royal wedding of a neighboring kingdom. But Aveland, Aveland? Aveland, Aveland? I'm gonna go with Aveland. It sounds more fantasy ish. Aveland is far from the fairy tale that she imagined. While young nobles attend candlelit balls and elegant garden parties, unrest brews amid the working class. The groom himself, Kit Carmine, is prickly, abrasive, and begrudgingly being dragged to the altar as a political pawn. But when Neve and Kit grow closer, an unlikely friendship blossoms into something more. Until an anonymous columnist you see in the Bridgerton connection here, starts buzzing about their chemistry, promising to leave them alone only if Neve helps uncover the royal family's secrets. The rot at the heart of Aveland runs deep. Is that how I said it before? We're going with it. But exposing it could risk a future she never let herself dream of and a love she never thought possible. I have to tell you, this is the top of my TBR. It came out on the second and I cannot wait to sit down with a cup of tea, a blanket, and just dive in. It sounds so awesome and cozy but also with just tons of action and drama uh, just ooh, it sounds awesome what else are you reading this month let me know in the comments if there's anything else i should be adding to my tbr but before you go and dive into all these great books help me decide what i should read for next month now i know what you're thinking why not just read one of the ones I just mentioned? I thought of that, and I might add that in later, but part of the goal of these recommendation videos, in addition to obviously helping you add to your epic TBR, is to give support to authors around publication month. So with that in mind, I've listed a few below that I pulled from NetGalley that are coming out in February, so we can help boost the authors as they publish. And I'm warning you ahead of time, the books are a bit all over the place in terms of genre, but if you've been around this channel for any length of time, you know that's how I roll. I put the links for all of these books below so you can read more about them if you want as well before deciding. So let's dive in. First is Switched by Sarah Reddy. Reedy? I'm just not having it with names today. We'll go with Reddy. <laughs> This is an opposite attracts rom-com mixed with Freaky Friday. And when I say that, I mean actually these opposite attract have sort of a romance that they decide can never happen and then they switch bodies. Male, female, switch bodies. I am so intrigued. I'm not sure how Sarah is going to pull it off, but it sounds hilarious and I love it. This is option one. Option two, You've Been Summoned by Lindsay Lamar. This is a 50s murder mystery, Choose Your Own Adventure. I haven't read a Choose Your Own Adventure since the old Goosebumps, but I adored it then, and I'm excited to see if I like the adult version. Option three is The End of the World by H.S. Gilchrist. A tech world mixed with ancient fantasy ruins, this sounds like a cool mix of both with an awesome adventure prot. And then option number four is Grieving Gold by Daniel McDaniel. This multi-POV epic fantasy has everything I love. Dark gods, long forgotten but returning, warring brothers, orphans, hunters. It feels like all of my favorite tropes mashed together, which could be an awesome thing or overwhelming, so I'm tempted to see which way it leans. But the biggest thing for me is that this fantasy world has lingering shadows of the tech and old world, so it's a bit post-apocalyptic fantasy, which can add for a fun twist on the above. So what do you think? Comment below or reach out, let me know which I should review for next month. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can know when new videos, and now new reviews, go up. If you have any publishing questions, don't hesitate to reach out, and until next time, keep reading.